total import procedure and documentation. Imports play an important role in the economy of every country, rich and poor alike. Rich countries need to import capital goods, raw materials and technology to ensure an optimum utilization of their production capacity. They need to import a wide variety of consumer goods to enable their people to enjoy a high standard of living. A low level of imports usually indicates low purchasing power of its people and also emergence of recessionary trends in the economy. At a firm's level, efficient management of import operations is critical factor in determining the overall profitability of its imports. The concept of customs operation is as old as the trade itself. In the olden days, there was a tradition followed by traders of offering gifts, etc., to kings to be able to sell their merchandise in different territories. The same practice has been formalized in the modern economic and political systems. Goods are subjected to levy of duties whenever they cross the national frontiers or boundaries of a country. Despite all efforts in favor of free trade, collection of revenue is still on priority of the commissioner in charge of a custom house. In this lesson, we will learn the objectives, basic information, documents and duties related to custom clearance of import cargo. After studying this lesson, you should be able to understand import financing, various methods of import finance, objectives of custom clearance, various stages of custom clearance, procedure of custom clearance. India followed a restricted import policy till mid-80s. Nothing could be imported without a license involving cumbersome procedures along with intricate documentation. Although some liberalization measures were taken in the second half of the 80s, real breakthrough came only in 1991. Steady progress has been made in 90s in replacement of quantitative restrictions, licensing and discretionary control over imports by deregulation, simplification of procedures and protection through tariff and exchange rates. Export-import policies of 1992-97 and 1997-2002 were the steps in this direction. It is against the background of nature and significance of India's import trade one has to understand import financing methods and techniques. Import financing involves making payment to foreign entities for the goods purchased from them. From the management decision-making viewpoint, it means making decision regarding terms of payment, arranging funds, involving choice of financial institution and the instrument to be used for making payment and involving choice of intermediary through whom the payment is to be made. The methods of import financing include financing under L or C, financing against bills under collection, financing against deferred payment, financing under foreign credit, and finance by Exim Bank of India. Letter of credit can be defined as a commitment of bank to pay the seller of goods or services a certain amount provided he presents stipulated documents evidencing the shipment of goods or the performance of services within a prescribed period of time. Import letters of credit financing involves three principal stages. Requesting bank to open a letter of credit, retiring documents under letter of credit, and import trust receipt facility. In the case of imports not covered by letters of credit, the documents are forwarded by a bank in the supplier's country known as the collecting bank for collection of proceeds from the importer and payment to the supplier through the remitting bank. In such cases, the collecting bank would examine the documents and the instructions stated in the covering schedule to ensure that all the stated documents have been received intact and the bill of lading and the bill of exchange 
are endorsed in its favor or blank endorsed to enable the bank to handle the documents. The bank then presents the documents to the importer on payment in case of site or DOP bill or against written acceptance in case of usance or DOP bill. Where the importer is eligible to receive the documents only on payment, he can avail an import loan or a trust receipt facility as discussed before. Imports under deferred payment implies that the supplier has agreed to supply goods on credit terms extending beyond six months. In such cases, authorized dealer has to refer each deferred payment case to RBI for prior approval of advance payment, bank guarantee and installments with documents viz, exchange control copy of import license, if any, contract copy and statement of desired facilities. Government of India gets assistance in the form of loans and development credits from international financial institutions as also foreign governments. These loans are of two types, tied loans and loans in free foreign currencies. Terms and conditions of each loan along with detailed instruction regarding the procedure to be followed for opening letters of credit, submission of documents, etc. are set out in public notices issued by DGFT. RBI also issues circulars for each foreign credit giving important instructions relating to such imports. Bank finances imports from third countries required for executing projects overseas for which Indian exporters have won contracts. Regarding imports into India, Exim Bank finances such imports which are export related, that is, imports by export oriented units, import of computer systems for development and export of software, import of plant, machinery, technology for upgradation or expansion of production capability for export markets. Exim Bank also finances bulk imports of consumable inputs and canalized items. Under this scheme, Promissory notes drawn in favor of commercial banks by the importer, borrowers are discounted. Exim Bank will issue letter of commitment for finance on request from commercial bank indicating its requirement. The quantum of finance depends on the condition that import order should not be less than rupees 1. The bill of entry is a document prepared by the importer or his clearing agent in the prescribed form under Bill of Entry Regulations 1971 on the strength of which clearance of imported goods can be made. When goods are imported in a particular country, the importer has to pay the necessary import duty. For this purpose, necessary information about the goods imported must be given to the custom authorities in a prescribed form called Bill of Entry form. For this purpose of giving information in the bill of entry form, goods are classified into three categories, namely Bill of Entry for Home Consumption, where an importer wants to get his goods cleared in one lot, he has to present the Bill of Entry for Home Consumption. Bill of Entry for Warehousing, where an importer wants to shift goods to a warehouse and thereafter gets his goods. Cleared in small lots, he has to present into bond bill of entry. Reason may be that he is unable to pay duty levyable on all his goods at one instance or maybe because of storage problem. X bond bill of entry. When an importer wants to remove goods from the warehouse, he has to present an X bond bill of entry which is green in color. Bill of entry is not required in the following cases. Passenger baggage, favor parcels, mailbox and post parcels, boxes, kennels of cargoes containing live animals or birds, unserviceable stores, 
like dunnage wood, empty bottles, drums, etc. of reasonable value. Ships stores in small quantities for personal use. Cargo by sailing vessels from customs port when landed at open bundles only. The importer has to fill up a separate bill of entry form for different classes of goods. In India, separate forms are not used but all the entries are made in one form. The free goods are marked as free in the entry form itself. The importer has to pay the duty before securing the possession of the goods. Those transactions which do not take place in accordance with provisions of different laws in force in India amounts to smuggling. It is the duty of customs administration to check such transactions. Custom clearance helps in regulating trade in accordance with national objectives and policies. To undertake agency functions, that is functions performed on behalf of other agencies, for example, it is the customs responsibility to ascertain that the requirements emanating from different acts in force are complied with or not. It may be requirements of the Foreign Exchange Management Act or Quality Control and Pre-Shipment Inspection Act. To collect trade data and submit the same to Directorate General of Commercial Intelligence and Statistics, Calcutta, Ministry of Commerce, which brings out trade data in different formats for the use of various government departments or ministries, trade and industry, researchers, and others concerned with international trade. The basic stages of custom clearance can be discussed as the presentation of bill of entry along with the relevant documents to the import department of the custom house that is the concerned group. The bill of entry is checked by the concerned official with the IGM submitted by the carrier and it is notified. Documents and the information are checked and scrutinized. The bill of entry is marked for assessment and appraisement to the concerned appraiser. The appraiser makes an assessment on the basis of information given in the documents and with reference to the classification and the value of the goods. The customs assessed bill of entry is returned to the importer ICHA for depositing duty within a period of seven days. Duty is deposited with the cash department and at this stage the original copy of the bill of entry is detached and sent for record purposes. The documents given to the importer ICHA for presentation to the dock superintendent physical examination of goods as per examination order. The dock superintendent marks the documents to one of the examiner or inspector for physical examination. The examiner after examination writes the reports and signs on the reverse of the bill of entry, sends it back to the superintendent for counter signature and the out of charge order is given. The CHA presents the documents to the port manager who ensures about any charge or demurrages if any to be paid by the importer. The same is deposited with the cash department. Thereafter, the port manager issues order on the basis of which goods are taken out of the customs area. The procedural formalities for getting imported goods cleared from customs are as per requirements of sections 45 to 49 of the CA 1962. The in charge of the carrier having custody over imported goods is under obligation to unload the goods in a customs approved area. The goods after unloading are not handed over to the actual owner of the goods but are transferred into the custody of the Port Trust Authority or any other competent agency or person as approved by the Commissioner. The importer can present bill of entry in a prescribed form to the proper officer in the import department either for the clearance for home consumption in an approved public warehouse. Capital goods intended for use in any 100% export-oriented unit can be deposited in a warehouse for a period of five years. The period for purpose of warehousing for another categories of goods is one year. 
As soon as bill of entry is presented along with other documents and the same is notified by the customs with reference to the IGM, the customs is under obligations to process it, make scrutiny of the documents information and declaration given by the importer and appraise the goods to duty. For this purpose, there are different group appraisers supported by their staff. The document passes through different hands for necessary action or endorsement or record. The dock superintendent marks the paper to one of the inspector for physical of goods on a random basis as per examination order given by the appraising officer AO. The contents of the packet are checked as per description and information given in the bill of entry. The classification value, composition and functional aspect of the item is also checked. If need be, the samples are also drawn and sent to the laboratory for their check and report. The quantity as per packing list is also checked and the excess or deficiency if any is recorded. The examiner writes his report on the bill of entry and it is also countersigned by the dock superintendent who makes out of charge order endorsement. The documents are handed over to the manager or security officer in charge of the port authority in whose custody the goods were kept after their unloading. He ensures on scrutiny of documents about any charges or demurrages if any to be paid by the importer. The above procedure is known as check second, that is documents are first examined, goods are appraised to duty and physical examination of goods is done thereafter. Over 95% of the consignments are subject to check second system. Where the AO is not able to identify goods properly or there is not sufficient information about the composition, functions, classification of the goods in question, the AO marks the papers to the dock superintendent for their physical examination. This is known as check first system. At any of the stage mentioned above, it is notified that the goods are prohibited goods or the importer has intended to import in violation and contravention of the provisions of the relevant acts in operation Penal proceedings may have to be initiated and the goods are liable to confiscation in terms of Section 11D. The discretion lies with the adjudication authority to allow their release to the importer on payment of a fine or to confiscate them. It is time to check the progress again. As soon as bill of entry is presented along with other documents, and the same is notified by the customs with reference to the IGM. Right or wrong? Wrong. Custom clearance helps in regulating trade in accordance with international objectives and policies. Right or wrong? Wrong. The bill of lading is a document prepared by the importer or his clearing agent in the prescribed form. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Import financing means making decisions regarding term of payment, arranging funds, involving choice of financial institution and the instrument through which the payment is to be made. The choice is conditioned by regulatory framework concerning imports and availability of foreign currencies. Apart from the main function of earning revenue, the customs perform the main functions of checking of smuggling, regulating trade, agency function and collecting trade data. Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992 The Customs Act 1962 The Customs Tariff Act 1975 and other acts constitute the legal framework. Import General Manifest contains details of the goods to be unloaded and is to be filled by the person in charge of conveyance bringing the goods. Bill of entry is to be filed by the importer giving all details of importer and goods etc. There are three types of bill of entry for different purposes. 
to expedite the proceedings, the BE can be filed 30 days in advance of the expected arrival of the carrier. 